I will say that's one of my favorite part. What are we talking about? Like, that's, that's the tasty stuff. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, if I'm, I'm going to have a that. steak, I'm going to have a steak and yeah, I'm not going to fuss sure, right? about it. All right. Hit me, producer Potts. Oh boy, Dr. Sarah, do you want to talk about the conversation about red meat that's happening over on your TikTok? Um, sure. So, um, this all started on a, a video about berries and I had someone just, you know, come into the comments and just say, but red meat is the most nutrient dense food or, or something like that. Um, which is factually incorrect. Um, but then there was this whole like back and forth between, uh, different people in the comment section about red meat has like all the nutrients that you need also factually incorrect, um, versus, uh, people who are more familiar with my content and understand, uh, what types of foods have what types of nutrients, because that is kind of the whole knowledge base that I'm trying to create with Nutrivore. Um, so I... I uh, made a video reply to that comment that was um, something to the effect of uh, red meat's not that nutrient dense. That doesn't mean it's not a nutritionally valuable food. I eat red meat. Um, I have a whole section in my book, Nutrivore, talking about where the science is at in terms of red meat consumption and the, the studies that have done the best job of controlling for healthy user bias, which is when so many health related behaviors stack that there's like a statistical leftover in the data that you kind of can't get rid of, um, as well as separating out the health effects of red meat versus processed meat, um, have basically shown that moderate red meat consumption is beneficial uh, different studies, like exactly how much that is, is I think up for interpretation still in the scientific literature, but let's say two to three servings per week is in that beneficial range. And then above that, where most of the science is starting to converge is that red meat overall is health neutral, um, which means that we ideally would mix it up with other protein sources, right? Some plant proteins, uh, making sure we're getting three or more servings of seafood per week, right? So that's kind of where the science is at on red meat. And I've talked about that in my book, but in this video, I said like, look, red meat is still nutritionally beneficial, quality protein, great source of iron, B vitamins, including vitamin B12, vitamin A, it's got lots of minerals, great source of zinc. Um, it has, um, especially if it's grass fed, good levels of a really cool health promoting fat called conjugated linoleic acid. Um, it's got some really cool um, non-proteinogenic amino acids and peptides and vitamin-like compounds. So things like CoQ10 and taurine and carnitine and carnosine and answerine, right? It's cut like really cool nutrition, but nutrient density is scientifically defined as nutrients per calorie. And when you calculate the Nutrivore score of red meat, um, you end up with scores somewhere for most types of red meat that you can get at the grocery store, somewhere between 150 to 400, with fattier cuts being at the lower end of that range and leaner cuts being at the higher end of that range. Gain meats tend to score a little bit higher than that. That brings up the average for red meat to be just shy of 400, kind of the same range as the average for poultry. And the averages for fish and shellfish are much higher. And actually, I'm going to look this up in my book so I have the exact averages in front of me. The average Nutrivore scores for different food families are found in Appendix C in my book. And so the average for red meat is 360. For poultry, it's 343. But that's game meat that's bringing the average for red meat up. Eggs, the average is 373. So they're more nutrient dense on average. Uh, Organ meat, the average is 903. Uh, fish, it's 602. And shellfish, it's 925. Why is organ meat and red meat classified differently? I separate them out because typically when we're talking about meat, we mean muscle, which is what, you know, steak or hamburger or a roast or chops would be, right? That all comes from a muscle. Whereas when we're talking about organ meat, we're talking about liver, kidneys, um, heart, uh, intestines, right? So 
Um, that makes a lot of sense. We're yeah. not consuming organ meat like we would when we're talking about right. like having a hamburger or something. And okay. Organ meat that is makes so much, it's so nutritionally different than muscle meat. So it it is very enriched in vitamins and minerals compared to muscle meat, as well as vitamin-like compounds and other cool things like CoQ10, uh, which is a vitamin-like compound. Um, that it's not especially given that most people are just eating muscle, they're not eating organ meat. It didn't feel fair to me to increase the average for organ meat with liver, for example, um, where like most livers are around like a neutral score of like 4,000, right? So like, it didn't feel fair to like, it felt like, ah, uh, that's cheating, right? We're bringing up the score of hamburger. We're making hamburger look better by adding in liver. Um, gotcha. Granted. Yeah. It's a great way to incorporate livers by mixing it with hamburger. No, but, you taught um, me that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's <laughs> why I've I've separated them out, um, just to to have to have uh, that to make, want the Nutrifor score to most accurately reflect the average nutrients per calorie of typical foods in that group. So also not every single food I have data for is included in these. It's really just looking at the. 30, Your 40, 50 foods. different examples of the most typical options in each one of these groups to just try to give you a sense of the idea is to give you a sense of how much of these foods to include. So this table has the average nutrivore score and the average energy density. So you can see some foods have lower nutrivore scores, but also lower energy density, right? So that kind of makes sense, right? The, the nutrients yeah. per calorie is fine, but it's, they're not a ton of calories. So those are foods that you kind of feel good about. Some foods like vegetables, really high nutrient density, low energy low density, energy those density. are go crazy foods. And then some foods like nuts and seeds, moderate nutrients per calorie, a lot of calories, right? So now we go, okay, a food to, to moderate, right? That's where an ounce of nuts and seeds per day comes from, but five servings of vegetables come from. So it's kind of right. data to help reinforce a lot of the other concepts that are discussed in the book. But so that leads really well into another yeah, okay. follow up question. Okay. And I saw this one on your socials and I was like, oh, this would be a great one to do. So I'm going to read this verbatim as the person left it. <laughs> so, okay. I'm preparing myself for the mean words, but that's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not mean at all. Okay. It's, it's, it's something I think it's a good clarification. So this person writes, if nutrient density is defined as nutrients per calorie, bonus points, this person, they are paying attention to your stuff. Um, might this low score be more of a function of the high uh, caloric content of red meat, especially if fattier meats with higher calories score lower nutrient density than lean meats? Ding, 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 ding. Um, yes. So um, this is kind of like why the energy density part, like why we just, we don't want to just choose foods based on Nutrifor score, right? We want to also look at the food family they belong to to have a sense of what types of nutrients they contain at, at like a bare minimum to include those two different uh, ways of sort of categorizing foods. Um, what part of our Nutrifor meal map plate does this food belong to, right? Just to kind of understand like, how does this fit into my overall diet? But yes, yeah, so there's two ways that a low score for a food can come about. And in practice, it's a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. So one is lower levels of essential nutrients, right? So we lower the numerator in the calculation. There's just less nutrients in this food uh, per, most of this math is done with hundred grams uh, because that's what all of the data we have that goes into it is, is based on. Uh, or it can have higher calories in that same 100 grams, right? So we're increasing the denominator. So either way in the math, that'll work out to a lower number. So importantly, a variety of fats are, in, are nutrients that go into the numerator. So when you have a fattier cut of meat, you are still actually increasing the numerator by incorporating things like monounsaturated fats, linoleic acid, alpha linolenic acid, the long chain, omega-3s are all going into the numerator as, you know, important uh, healthy fats. Conjugated linoleic acid is, is in um, the, the numerator as well. Um, but you're also losing 
some nutrients are lower because they're not concentrated in the fat of your marbled steak. They're concentrated in the lean part of your marbled steak. So some other nutrients are going down. So overall, the numerator is lower and the caloric density because uh, protein is four calories per gram and fat is nine calories per gram. So when you have a fattier cut of meat, that dramatically increases uh, the caloric density of that meat. So also your denominator is going up. So it is, as it is in practice for pretty much all the time, a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. So part of it is um, there's less vitamins and, and minerals. And part of it is there's more calories. And altogether, that's why fattier cuts tend to be on the lower end of the Nutribor score range and lean cuts tend to be on the higher end of the Nutribor score range. But it's important to know that essential fats and um, healthy fats for which there is a, a recommended dietary allowance, those are still in the numerator. So those are still, the, the those meat is still being credited for having those nutrients. Um, but yeah, that's, that is, um, so there is, overall less nutrients per serving but also less nutrients per calorie that is, that is what it, the end result is with a, a fattier cut of meat that doesn't mean only choose the lean meats right that's an essential nutrient right um but you want to be considering making sure we're getting enough of those heart healthy fats like the fats in olive oil and vegetable oil see my series on <laughs> vegetable oil has been good for us, like the fats in seafood and nuts and seeds, right? We want to be making sure we're getting enough of those fats, but that we're keeping our total fat intake within the accepted macronutrient distribution range. I previously did a lecture style video where I talked about what balanced macronutrients look like. So maybe pursue your supports. You can put a link to that. Um, I can. This video right here. For sure. Mm -hmm. So we want to be making sure that our fat intake is moderate. And so we want to be considering like all of those things when we decide how much to trim our beef and how lean of a cut to choose. Um, I will say that's one of my favorite part. What are we talking about? Like, that's, that's the tasty stuff. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, if I'm, I'm going gonna... to have a steak, I'm going to have a steak and yeah, I'm not going to fuss sure, right? about it. Yeah. So, but I don't um, have steak every single day at every yeah. meal. So well, it's about balance, right? I started this video by saying I eat red meat. Uh, yeah. That is uh, my choice. Um, and I choose it as a nutrient dense uh, whole food, right? But I also make sure that I, I do eat a lot of poultry. I eat a lot of seafood. I eat plant proteins. Um, like I, I, sometimes my protein for dinner is soy, right? Like I, I do incorporate a lot of different protein foods so that red, my red meat consumption is moderate and I'm eating tons of vegetables fruit, nuts and seeds, legumes, right? Like I'm I'm eating a diverse diet um, according to Nutrivore. And so right. red meat absolutely can fit into that, but I'm under no illusions that it gives me everything my body needs. <laughs> there are lots of nutrients that we can only get from, from plant foods that we can't get from animal foods. And it is just mathematically incorrect to state that red meat is the most nutrient dense food. Uh, even liver, if you wanted to count that, is about the same nutrient density as oysters. So you couldn't even say that liver was the most nutrient dense food. First of all, there's lots of leafy vegetables that technically beat it out. But even if you just wanted to include similar nutrient profile foods, kind of tied with oysters. So, uh, so yeah, red meat is, I, I include it in my diet. I think it can absolutely fit into a healthy diet. I think it is in moderation a health promoting food, um, but I don't. It definitely doesn't give us everything we need. That is not accurate. I love that so much. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Thank you.